Last time we talked about how the health care bill must be killed and we began counting the ways it is objectionable, including how it was passed, the lies and broken promises made in the selling of it, and the cost. But there's more, much more. You will be forced to participate in this program or face government penalties. Over 20 states are already suing the federal government to stop that mandate. One of those lawsuits, filed by Virginia Attorney General Ken Cuccinelli, has already resulted in a federal court ruling that the mandate is unconstitutional. We were promised that this legislation would lower our costs. It won't. The average cost to you of a policy will go up 17% in the next year alone. We were also promised that we could keep our current health care plans. Not true. Some 10 million people are at risk of losing their coverage in the short term and being forced into government-run exchanges. Though there are no actual numbers to substantiate this, this bill has almost certainly contributed to our near 10% unemployment rate because of the reluctance of businesses to resume hiring. The taxes imposed on small business in this bill have created greater uncertainty about the cost of hiring. And as you know, businessmen don't hire people in an uncertain financial environment. If the provisions of the bill were not so onerous on business, why is it that dozens of waivers have already been applied for and granted to large companies? And what about doctors? With this bill raising their cost of doing business and saddling them with untold additional regulations, doctors will undoubtedly leave the profession in significant numbers and perhaps even worse, Many will never even enter the field and the quality of our health care will diminish. There's more. Death panels, while perhaps not quite as grisly as the name might suggest, will nevertheless ramp up the rationing of health care, particularly among the elderly. There will be more and more procedures, many of them life prolonging, that will not be covered in the government managed plan. But perhaps the worst element of this plan was political. It is entirely clear from their own past public statements that at a minimum a majority of the leaders of the Democratic Party see this bill as just the first step in creating the same type of single-payer system as Europe and Canada where the government controls everything. These systems have consistently produced inferior health care, witness the one-way traffic to America for life-saving medical procedures, huge waiting lines for even the most critical procedures, and massive economic problems for national governments. Now that we've spoken a couple of times about all that is wrong with this health care bill, next time we'll offer up part three on real common sense health care reform that can reduce the staggering costs, restore the doctor-patient relationship, and provide real consumer choice and competition in the health care marketplace.